my name is Colin McLaughlin. Um, my background is that I started as a classroom teacher in a secondary school. Um, and I very quickly became compelled, really, by students' behaviour. Um, I found it fascinating. I found that it was, it was always rooted in a reason, even the most bizarre behaviours. So I, I guess I became quite interested very early on in learning about students, learning about practice, and researching what was going on in my classroom. Um, as you can tell from the grey hair, I've been doing it a while. And so, at that time, that was not a common position. Um, you, it wasn't seen as, in a sense, the way you do things around here for teachers to be learners. So I then went off and did a master's degree. Um, I actually came back and got demoted because that was another feature of the time, which was that you, um, you weren't expected to put into practice anything you learnt. Um, and pretty soon I became very, very interested in trying to change things and so ended up working in both the local authority and then in a university setting. I've been doing that since. I, I did become interested in change and I pretty re soon realised that the key to change in education or development in education is teachers. Um, and I think I did have a natural leaning towards finding out and so uh, research became something I became very interested in. But I, have, I don't think I've been, my career has been characterised by research with teachers, research on practice, um, participatory research, research that leads to reform or change. Um, and I'm interested in how that works and what works in that context. So it's not been a traditional uh, academic research career, as it were. Well, I think they are actually the most powerful form of learning you can take because all your assumptions are challenged. There's a definition of research uh, or a phrase to encapsulate research which says it's about making the familiar strange. And when you go to work in another context, everything is strange. And it's also very personally demanding because you have to be strong enough in many ways to question your own assumptions. You can't, all your cultural assumptions are challenged. I can remember um, a Russian once saying to me, why do you have assemblies in schools in England? I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. I just take it for granted. That's what you do. That's what you start the day with. Um, so it challenges your assumptions. It gives you huge potential for learning because you see people doing things in different ways. So you think, well, we could do it that way. Or um, why do they do it that way? Why do we do it this way? So it is very, very exciting. There is a fashion now for, you know, in our globalized world for transferring policy from one place to another. I think that's hugely dangerous. Um, I think I've learned a greater respect and humility the longer I've done international work, really. Uh, and that you do tend to start with a sort of, well, you've invited me here to talk about our practice, so I must be superior sort of position. And that's a very dangerous position um, and one you need to change quite quickly. Uh, so it's very powerful in terms of learning I think the final thing, for example, is I've worked in contexts in, in um, sub-Saharan Africa, in Kazakhstan, where I have been amazed at the capacity and desire for learning of young people and teachers. Uh, you know, it's exciting when people want to learn that much. Yeah.